What's going on guys? It's Christy Oxen Kulik from Condemn Labs. I just took my two scoops of Convict and we're gonna do arms today. So what I like to do is I always like to start with the free weight for each part or some type of power movement. Um, even arms have power movements, you know, you have your strict curls, you have your dumbbell curls, we can put a little more weight on there. And then for triceps, I like to do some type of maybe press down variation or some type of overhead variation. So it really all depends on what you're into. I like to start with those because that's usually takes out the most energy. So I like to make sure I have the most energy for them. So right here, we're gonna start with some dumbbell curls. Some key tips that I have is to always make sure that the shoulders are down and back, and that kind of alleviates the front delt from any type of the movement. And as you're coming up, twist that pinky and make sure that that elbow is always slightly in front of the body with the elbow with the shoulder back. And very slowed and controlled movements. Give it a split second pause at the top. And after the first set, if you're doing it correctly, you should already feel the blood start to kind of make its way in there. Actually, so... I've been coming to this gym for a little over a few weeks now, and my favorite piece of equipment here for arms is this tricep pushdown. So with this machine, you'll see it has a natural tilt to the front of it, okay? You'll see that there's different hand placements on it as well. And honestly, instead of regular dips, I prefer this over that, just because with the regular dips, my body weight isn't really enough, and I start putting chains on me, or I start hanging stuff from the waist. It's very uncomfortable with this. I'm seated, I'm in a nice comfortable position. I can work on my form better, and overall, just a better feeling on the tricep. No matter where your hand placement is, guys, remember with triceps, some very important keys to make sure that those elbows are somewhat in, okay? So this is a little bit wider. If you want to start off, you can always grab a neutral grip right here. That'll help your elbows go in a little bit more. My preference is just over here. It's just how I like it. That's how I feel it more. Everybody's different. That's my preference. So again, up against that pad, push down, contract that tricep. Try to get the lower chest out of it completely if you can. And make sure that you're squeezing every rep and forcing all the blood you possibly can into that movement. One of my little tips that I like to do too is always to make sure you're pushing, push with the palms. Notice how I don't have to grab this and push it down. For me, when I push down with the palm, it just transfers everything up to the forearm right into the tricep. Remember, depending on your sport, you know, powerlifting, Main goal is to always move as much weight from point A to point B in bodybuilding or any type of you know fitness training in terms of where you're trying to look for a look. You always want to make sure that you're contracting a specific muscle. Try to get rid of every other muscle group if you possibly can. So if you guys have noticed, I actually go from bicep to tricep, back to bicep, back to tricep. Sometimes I may do a superset with one and the other at the end. Sometimes I may start with a warm-up with both included. Um, it's just based on preference, depends on how I'm feeling. Um, for me, I feel like my biceps lag a little bit more than my triceps. Um, you know, my pushing movements are a lot better. My pulling movements need a little bit of work. I think that has a lot to do with that. So I go back and forth simply because of the fact that I get more blood in the whole arm. You know, I like the pump, it feels better. Um, it kind of gives that other muscle group a bit of time to you know, recuperate itself until its next workout is being you know, put into place. Um, Another thing that, you know, I tried the biceps first and the triceps, it's great, but once you exert that one body part, if you're really going hard with progressive overload and you're really, you know, your nervous system takes a toll. So I found that my tricep workouts would kind of lag because I was so exhausted from just the bicep workout alone. This way, they're both getting hit, you know, it's more effective and I have noticed a little better arm development because of that. actually not extending all the way. I'm not holding it there. There's almost a constant movement in my rhythm, and that's just the tension under the muscle. You know, if I stop at the bottom, it's almost like a break to me. So what I do is I go right before that, that straightening point, and that puts the ultimate pressure on my tricep without actually taking that break at the bottom. It's actually better for your joints as well. 
you know, a lot of people stay right here. And then after years and years, trust me, I see it all the time, try some tendonitis as possible, you know, pains, aches, stuff like that. Chances are it's because you were wearing down the joint instead of the muscle. And you see it very often in powerlifting, and sometimes in bodybuilding if they're not trained correctly. So always make sure that when you're pushing down the weight, that you're never straightening out like this. You know, nice, slow, controlled, right before that extension point. That tricep's fully stimulated right now. And then back up very nice and slow. Big bro tip, by the way. If anyone ever makes fun of you for picking certain lighting and that's what your machines, you can tell them to go f themselves. We're in here to feel better about ourselves, all right? We're getting our workouts in. Look good, feel good, it's a whole mental thing. If you look better, if you feel better, you get better workouts, I don't care what anybody says. You come in here, sometimes, you know, if I can't see my arms while I'm doing an arm workout, I don't get a good arm workout. That's just how I am. I'm sure a lot of people out there like that too. So go to the machines that have the better lighting. You have a mirror, you wanna use a mirror, go check yourself out, feel better about yourself. You're here to boost your mentality, not just your physicality. So with this pad angle here, it's perfect, but it also makes you kind of have to incorporate your decline chest because of the angle on it, especially if you scoot your ass all the way back into that corner. So what happens is you're leaning forward, any type of leaned over movement like this, the more you lean over, when you push down, it's hitting that lower chest more. So what I like to do is, I scoot my ass a little further up on the seat, just a little bit, so I'm a little more straight up, and that way, it translates the weight more to the tricep as opposed to the lower chest. We're here to do arms, not tits. Get those out. Now, this is a decent amount of weight, especially for a tricep pushdown. If you're not stimulating the muscle correctly, there's no point in adding on the weight, all right? When I was doing three plates, I felt every single repetition, it was nice and controlled, it was slow. There's no momentum usage, there's nothing, you know, no type of struggle, really, until the last few reps. This is gonna be my last set. It's a all-out working set. So what I'm doing is, I'm getting this for as many reps as I possibly can with good form and making sure that my triceps are feeling all the weight, okay? As soon as the weight starts going, you know, a little flimsy, as soon as the form starts getting a little out of whack, there's no point in doing it. It just means that you're recruiting other muscles into the workout, and it's not even a benefit. So between sets is also very, very important. What I like to do is, as I'm sitting there, I like to make sure I'm getting a stretch with the tricep. You can always get a stretch by coming over, stretching, and pulling in this way towards the head. And that'll actually stretch down this whole head right here. And that just helps make room for more blood to get in there. You know what I mean? The more blood, the better. You know, the bigger the pump, the more nutrients flowing in there. In terms of nutrients, what I have in the shaker is actually some lockdown creatine, and I have some EAA, BCAAs I can find. I believe it's the uh, fruit punch. It's a guy. Peach iced tea. You got the peach iced tea in there. And that put together just excels in nutrition absorption. You know, you got your creatine, you got your essential amino acids, you got your branched chain amino acids. And those are all nutrients. The more blood you get into the arms, those nutrients are following within that blood. So very important. Intro workout nutrition, just as important as pre-workout nutrition, just as important as post-workout nutrition, and obviously throughout the whole day to make sure you're ready for the workout itself. So next bicep workout, I'm gonna do hammer curls with the rope. I just like the way the tension feels on my arm a little better. With the dumbbells, I tend to get a little more interested in the weight as opposed to the actual feel on the muscle. With the cables, I can actually position myself and choose which way the momentum hits my arms more correctly. So what I do is I grab it like this, but as opposed to coming under like this and going straight up, I actually come this way, tuck the elbows a little bit. And what I do is I come right up to the forehead, but keeping the shoulders back. So I'll be right here, and I just simply right in there. And all the tension is still in that bicep. Some people prefer their hands closer together. Some people like them further out. That's just a preference to me personally, but I like to do somewhere in the middle. So come a little bit in and right down. And that stretch is just as important. So with the hammer curls, 
big part of the hammer curls is actually working a specific part between the bicep and the tricep that a lot of people really don't take into consideration. The brachialis is a nice little muscle right here, right above where the forearm ends, right in here, this connection piece. That's called the brachialis. If you flex it, you should see it pop out just a little bit from the side. That's what gives you that width from the front. Something I actually lag in, so I try to incorporate a few variations of hammer curls in most of my workouts. For today's sake, I'm just gonna go through my basics, my bread and butters, things like that. But remember, the bicep, tricep, brachialis is in the middle. The larger the brachialis gets, the thicker the bicep looks from the front, and it actually will separate the arm, and you'll have more noticeable definition, more noticeable mass in the inside of the arm. Just as important. I'm feeling it today, Mr. Krabs. Oh my God. Art thou feeling us now, Mr. Krabs? I'm fucking feeling it, SpongeBob. bring it up and go right at the tricep pull downs. Pull downs, not push downs. A lot of people don't know the difference. Very, very specific details. Make the transition over, okay? Push downs, you're pushing, okay? Pushing down, you're going down this way. Push downs will something like this. Notice how it's more of a pushing movement, elbows are out. You're literally pushing the weight down. Pull downs, a little different. Grabbing the weight. Get your form. Elbows to the side right here. Pinch down a little bit. And we actually have your elbows tucked. So you're doing, you're pulling down this way. Two. Notice at the bottom, what I do with the fingers is a little tip. I like to take the thumbs and actually push down on the rope at the bottom. Gives you better flexion all the way at the bottom. And it's slow control negative. Top. Another big thing I see people do all the time is they'll come this way and they'll pull down this way, whatever the case is. I never really felt it that way. I feel more when I'm more straight up with the weight. My attention is going directly opposite of the way that I'm pulling. I get to the maximum weight, maximum exhaustion on that muscle with the least amount of need. Strictly triceps, elbows pin, flex to the hip, not out like this, but down. that you look like. Sometimes you don't get that last rep, you keep pushing until you give out. That's how you know you're done. So, to finish off this arm workout, we're actually gonna do a superset with preacher curls, with this old school ass easy bar, with this little lip in the front of it, I've actually never used this before. And we're actually superset it with extensions, seated back on the same exact piece of equipment here. Sometimes supersets are a great way, especially for some people who don't have a lot of time in the gym. I see a lot of people incorporate supersets in their workout. You do get a lot more done in a short period of time. I like to start every workout with progressive overload, specifying specific movements by themselves. Towards the end, supersets are a great way to get that extra blood in there and just reach a different level of intensity, you know, maybe end off the muscle a little bit more efficiently and then, you know, get in, get out. My biggest motto, there's no point in sitting here for two, three hours. I get in here an hour, hour and a half max and I'm out, no matter what body part. You know, sometimes if I train two body parts at a time, you know, I may, I may sit in for like an hour 45, but it never goes past an hour 45. Like, if I'm here for two hours, I was doing too much talking. So big part with the preacher curls, you wanna keep those elbows in, right here. And when you're lifting, try to get the shoulders out. So you wanna drop those shoulders, like give it a little lean forward, come up, squeeze at the peak, Come down slow and repeat. 
and this isolates the biceps very nicely. You can do this in the beginning, at the end of your workout. I'm just doing it toward the end today. Super set it with the overextend, overhead extensions, just for that little extra pump. But these are gonna rip your biceps apart. If they're not pumped, if they're not breaking down, if they're not in pain, this will definitely make it happen. Notice too, when it comes to the top, it's as soon as the bicep's done flexing. I don't do anything extra. I don't rest at the top like this, like a lot of people do. I don't bring the shoulders up. Elbows always against the pad. And as soon as that bicep is fully peaked, that's all I need to do. And then come down slow. So right here. Come down slow. For the tricep extensions, when I start going a little heavier, I tend to get someone to hand it off to me, just to be safe. But today, and I go in crazy heavy. So I grab it right by this little lip area right here. It's so conveniently placed. I sit back on the easy pad, press like this, toss it over. And this is actually really nice because it keeps my elbows nice and tight. That's what you want in this movement. Bring them back a little bit, elbows in, come down, get that stretch, and come right up. Don't come forward over the head when you come down. That's just a resting period. Right here, elbows slightly a little bit bent at the top. You stretch the tricep constantly, constant tension. Guys, sometimes progressive overload doesn't necessarily mean that you have to add weight or add reps. For example, if you're doing this super set that I'm doing right now, I'm actually not gonna put any weight on it. My idea of progressive overload for this is gonna be to get the same amount of reps as I did the set before. If I can do that, I beat what I did last week, and that means that next week what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to do maybe an extra set, you know, maybe a little extra few reps on the beginning set. That's still progressive overload. Anytime you do any type of more reps, any bit more weight, it's progressive overload. As long as you're doing more than you did the time before. And that can include sets, the number of reps in those sets, etc. So we're gonna to try to get the same amount of reps here. Elbows always in. Spread them out like this. Not really any benefit to it. Elbows in, get that stretch back, straight up. sticking through me with my whole arm workout today. That was, you know, a few tips that I use, a few workouts that I always use, my bread and butters for my arm workouts. They've been helping me over the years, you know, constantly gain some type of either density, size, leanness in my arms. So hopefully you got something helpful out of it. And again, my name is Chris, the Ox McCulloch. That workout was powered by Convict Stim from Condemn Labs. Until next time, guys.